Let's dive into the steps for cleaning a kitchen that will leave it sparkling and inviting. Microwaves. You will come across a few different types of microwaves and locations. Some microwaves will be a sip below the counter like a drawer, some above the stove, as well as some sitting on the counter. Microwave drawers will usually not have trays that you will need to clean or remove from the unit, but they are easy to miss. Make sure that if you do not see a microwave on the counter or above the stove, that you check all low cabinets and under cabinets. For all microwaves, it will be vital that you make sure to wipe all buttons, edges, and face of the microwave. When cleaning microwaves with trays, typically the ones located on the counters or above stoves, you will start by removing the tray and piece that the tray rotates on from inside the microwave and either place it in the sink or on the counter. Next, spray the inside of the microwave with heavy duty and use a cleaning cloth or magic eraser to scrub the entire inside, including the top. If there is a lot of food stuck to remove, you can steam it off by placing a very wet cleaning cloth inside and microwaving it for 30 seconds. If you do this, please be careful when removing the cleaning cloths as it will be very hot. Now that the inside of the microwave is steamed, you should be able to remove anything that was stuck on easily by wiping with a cleaning cloth. Clean and dry the microwave tray and replace it. Spray the outside of the microwave, making sure to get the edges as well as the opening of the microwave door, wiping the lip and scrubbing it with a microfiber cleaning cloth. Buff it until it is dry and make sure no streaks are left behind. Stove hoods, stove tops, and ovens. When it comes to stoves, it is very important that you start with the area above the stove first, then work your way down. Some stoves will have a hood, some a microwave, and some cabinets. No matter what is above the stove, you will be cleaning that area as well. After the hood or the area above the stove is completely cleaned, you will then wipe down the backsplash behind the stove as this area seems to get dirty quite quickly when kitchens are used often. Now let's get into the different types of stoves and how to properly clean them. If the stove is a gas stove. Number one, remove all grates from the stove and soak them in the sink. Two, remove all the knobs from the stove if they're really dirty, you can place them into the sink to soak with the grates. If you can't remove these, make sure to clean them well before moving on. Three, lightly spray the stove top with heavy duty and wipe the debris off. Remember, always be very careful not to get the pilot lights wet. Four, use a cleaning cloth or magic eraser and heavy duty or a grout brush to clean the burner covers depending on how dirty they are. Five, wipe everything off with a cleaning cloth. Make sure to wipe with the grain of the stove top if it's stainless steel. You may have to go over the stove top a few times to get all the debris and liquid off. Six, if any streaks remain, spray the stove top again and buff to a shine with a dry, fluffy, clean cloth. Seven, remove the grates from the sink and scrub with a magic eraser or grout brush necessary. Dry them off and place them back on the stove in the correct places. Eight, wipe off the stove knobs and place them back on the correct order if you have removed them. Nine, Wipe down the front of the oven, making sure to get the top of the lip of the oven door and the top lip of the warming drawer, as well as the entire front of the oven. If the stove is a flat electric stove, either glass or ceramic. One, spray and clean the backsplash if applicable. Two, remove the knobs and soak in the sink if needed. Three, Spray down the stove top and wipe any loose debris off. Four, 
Using heavy duty and a magic eraser for the stove, be sure to pay special attention to any rings on or near the burners. You can use a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend and a wet magic eraser to scrub the rings off gently if needed. Five, wipe all of the Barkeeper's Friend off with a wet cleaning cloth and rinse the cleaning cloth. Repeat until the product is off the stovetop. Lightly spray the stovetop and use a dry cleaning cloth to buff the stove until no streaks remain. Wipe off the knobs and put them back on in the correct order. If you are struggling with streaks, use a firm, dry cleaning cloth to buff the streaky areas. Six, if the stove is attached to an oven, clean the front of the oven, including the edges of the oven and warming drawers. If the stove is an electric stove with coils, one, Spray and clean the backsplash if applicable. Two, remove the coils and drip pans. Soak the drip pans in the sink with dish soap. Add a little bit of BKF if they are really greasy. Do not soak the coils. Three, remove the knobs and soak them in the sink if needed. Four, spray down the stove top and wipe it down with a cleaning cloth. You can use the magic eraser to scrub off anything that is caked on before you wipe it down if needed. Five, lift the top of the stove top and clean the space underneath. You can use heavy duty and a cleaning cloth to wipe it out or use a magic eraser scraper to scrub if needed. Six, clean the drip pans with Barkeeper's Friend rinse. Dry them off and return the drip pans and coils to the stove in the correct locations. Seven, clean the knobs and place them back on the stove in the correct order. Eight, clean the front of the stove, including the edges of the oven and warming drawers. Small appliances. Before cleaning the counters, you will clean the small appliances on top of the counters. You don't want to spend too long on this or clean too deeply, but it's a good opportunity to shine and clear debris from things like coffee makers, toaster, toaster ovens, etc. This can make a big difference in how clean the kitchen feels overall and is a chance to show our clients that the little things matter. Something that is extremely important to keep in mind is when cleaning stainless steel items in fridges you will always want to go with the grain while only using a microfiber cloth. Despite what Mr. Miyagi taught us, we do not want to move in spiral or wax on in off motions. This could possibly damage surfaces. You do not want to use any other tool other than a microfiber cloth to prevent damaging these expensive items. This is critical and always dry stainless steel immediately after you wipe down with damp cloths to prevent streaks. Counters. Make sure you have cleaned any upper cabinets above the counters. Most of the time you will simply spot clean them, but you wanna clean them before you clean the counters so you don't come back and drop dust back on the counters you have already cleaned. Now as you're wiping the counters, Lift items while wiping and check at eye level to make sure you've got all the crumbs, especially with toasters. An eye level check is where you are at eye level with the counter, checking the counters for any crumbs or spots you may have missed when cleaning from above. It can be easy to miss these areas on counters made of granite and marble, but this technique should be used on all counters and flat surfaces to ensure that no crumbs are left behind. We clean everything on the counters and the counters themselves. When cleaning counters, work section by section. Clear a section of the counter and clean the wall backsplash. Spray the counter with heavy duty and use a cleaning cloth to clean the counter. Wipe dry with one cleaning cloth and have another dry cleaning cloth handy to buff the counter. Once the counter is clean, start cleaning the items to put back in place. If there are items on a tray, take them off and wipe the tray before replacing with items arranged on top. 
Always remember to rearrange scenes nicely, but not in completely different areas. For instance, if the knife block is next to the stove, that is where it should go back once the counter is clean. If you are tidying papers, just make sure you stack them where they were originally. Low cabinets and doors in kitchens. You will also make sure to spot clean the kitchen cabinets each cleaning. We do not fully wet wash cabinets from top to bottom unless you are servicing a deep clean. Also, it is a good rule of thumb to never spray cabinets or wood directly. You will always spray on your microfiber, then wipe. One, check for all spots on cabinet faces. Use heavy duty and a cleaning cloth to clean any spots you find. If there are any stubborn grease spots, it is important to make sure you clean it off well. Two, while spot cleaning the cabinets, make sure to open each cabinet just enough to clean the area behind the cabinet door where it meets the door frame behind it. There are often fingerprints hiding behind the cabinet doors. Three, use heavy duty and a cleaning cloth to wipe down the pantry door and all other doors in the kitchen. Make sure to always give special attention to the area around the door handle. Also, we do not use magic erasers on wood tables or cabinets. Large appliances. When it comes to these dishwashers and fridges, we will only wet wash the exterior of these unless the interiors are added on with an additional charge. It's important to us that you are paid accordingly, so never hesitate to let the office know if things are added during the cleaning process by the client. Always clean with the grain of the stainless steel appliance. Normally the grain goes from top to bottom, but be careful to take note of the direction of the metal grain as it is easier to scratch the surface when going across the grain. If there is any debris or soap on the front of the dishwasher, make sure to use heavy duty and a cleaning cloth to remove it prior to cleaning the dishwasher. Any debris that is left behind will scratch the stainless steel and any soap left on it will cause streaks. If the top of the fridge is accessible, Move any items that are there and wipe down the top of the fridge and use a step ladder if needed. Get a cleaning cloth wet from either heavy duty or water and use it to wipe down the front and the sides of the fridge. Make sure to always wipe with the grain of the stainless steel to minimize streaks. Make sure to get inside and around the handles really well. If the fridge has two sides, make sure to open both doors slightly and wipe the inside edges of the doors and clean the rubber door seals all the way around. If the fridge has a water ice dispenser, remove and clean the drip tray. Make sure to clean the area where the cup goes and all of the buttons thoroughly. If any streaks are still on the fridge after you've cleaned it, buff out the streaks using a dry, fluffy cleaning cloth and a tiny bit of water or heavy duty if needed. Six, make sure that you have your mop heads already wet before cleaning the sink. First things first, clean the area above the sink and work your way down, remembering to wipe down and clean the soap dispenser, soap trays, and other items around the sink. Then you'll wanna wipe down the sink with a dry microfiber cloth, then rinse the sink out, removing any leftover food or crumbs from the sink. While you are running the water, if the sink is fairly clean, be sure to address nooks and crannies with a detailed cleaning brush or magic eraser. If the sink is filled with tougher stains or other strong residues, you will want to let your cleaning solution sit in the sink while you clean the rest of the kitchen. Pay close attention to the drains and the drain stopper while rinsing away any cleanser. Then polish the faucet and knobs after running the water throughout the sink. Using your small detailed brush to detail around the edges that might have built up gunk or grime. Finish by wiping the sink dry. This will prevent sinks from streaking or leaving water residue behind on your freshly cleaned sink. If the sink is stainless steel, one, 
Remove all dishes from the sink and rinse the sink to clear any debris. Two, use a mixture of Barkeeper's Friend and water on your magic eraser to scrub the sink. Make sure to get inside the drain really well. Three, rinse the sink thoroughly so no Barkeeper's Friend is left behind and then dry the sink. Use a soft, dry cleaning cloth and heavy duty to clean and buff the faucet and handles. If the handle is a single handle, make sure to turn on the faucet and clean in the area at the bottom that is hidden when the faucet is turned off. If needed, use a small scrub brush around the edges of the faucet to remove any buildup. Four, make sure to clean all drain plugs and other accessories that are kept in or near the sink. If the sink is a composite sink, one, remove all dishes from the sink and rinse the sink to clear any debris. Two, use a magic eraser with heavy duty spray to scrub the sink. Make sure to get inside the drain really well. Three, clean the faucet and handle. If it has a single handle, make sure to turn it on and clean in the area as well. Four, Make sure to clean all drain plugs and other accessories that are kept in or near the sink. If the sink is a porcelain sink, one, rinse out any debris that may be in the sink. Two, scrub the sink with Barkeeper's Friend and a magic eraser. Make sure to get inside the drain really well. Three, rinse the sink thoroughly. Four, Use a soft, dry cleaning cloth and heavy duty to clean and buff the faucet and handles. Five, thoroughly dry out sink. Make sure to clean all drain plugs and other accessories that are kept in or near the sink. Tables. As well as using a duster to clean hard to reach places such as underneath the table, pay close attention to the legs of the table where the legs meet the table, and any cross braces under the table. Places such as these catch a surprising amount of dust. As always, if you have any questions or need any further guidance, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help you succeed and make every home you service a place of comfort and cleanliness. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.